On this episode of A Soul's Quest podcast, Omar and I will discuss the narrative fallacy, its impact, and why it's important to question the stories we tell ourselves and others. Stay tuned. So how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, do you remember mm. that from Fat Albert? Hey, hey, hey. Yes, I do. I used to love that cartoon. Me and my brother used to love that. And really? I used to say, hey, 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 Fat Albert to my brother because his name is Albert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of sitting over here right now. And, and and it's ironic enough that we're talking about the, the narrative fallacy because there were so many good things about Fat Albert, but... <laughs> we gotta gotta, yeah we gotta bring our viewers and our listeners into knowing what the narrative fallacy i'm sure a lot of people know what it is but yeah that's yeah well i don't know to be honest with you i think that we're living in a world in which like uh, the basic stories are are taking over and and there's so much not understanding stories that things get left to left less they get lost in translation yeah yeah. yeah. So what? A, yeah, yeah. So I, it's re, it's actually a very interesting uh, topic. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited mm-hmm. about talking about. I it. forgot so, how I came across it. To be honest with you, I don't remember exactly how this narrative fallacy came across. Cross. I came across it and I started looking into it, and I went, Ah, this will be a cool topic. I read about it in an article. I don't remember it. No, I I did. I read about it in an article. I don't know if I shared it with you, but I okay. read about it. So I I was aware of it before. So when you said you wanted to talk about it, I was like, well, that, that's going to be a cool topic. Okay. Um, it's pretty interesting. So let's go. All then. right. Let's so go. It's important for our quest here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just to get started, of course, mm-hmm. I got my handy dandy notes, you know, and I Real also, am, I'm also rocking the, uh, the soul quest. Mug. What do you call this? A mug? No, it's, what's this stuff called that you have? Branding. 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 Yeah. Excuse me. Shout out to Maria, my sister-in-law for her. Looking us Unfortunately, up. Unfortunately, we're not selling anything Beautiful. yet, but you no, know, we're not. But we'll we will. Yeah. We will. But it's actually a nice cup, and <laughs> don't be fooled. I'm drinking wine, <laughs> just so we're clear. Okay. Um, okay. Go for <laughs> it. All right. So let's define what a narrative. A, a the narrative, na- the the narrative, narrative fallacy. fallacy. Let's just let's do, let's define it first, so that we can start conversating about it. There How's that? All right. How is that? Sounds good. Let's Sweet. Do this. All right. Hit it. The narrative fallacy is the tendency for people to construct simple, coherent stories or explanations for complex events or systems, even when the evidence does not support these explanations. These stories often rely on anecdotal evidence and ignore important statistical or contextual contextual information. Nassim Nicholas Taleb, I hope I said that right, Correct. coined the term in his book, the black swan, the impact of the highly improbable. Sweet. So just really quick out of curiosity, because mm-hmm. I know that you're always reading stuff and whatever. Did you, have you read that book or you, have you? No, I haven't. It? I haven't read this book. I heard a lot of, a couple of his uh, of videos of him speaking on, mm-hmm. on this particular topic. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it kind of like piqued my interest because if you think about it, you know, we tell ourselves a lot of stories, right? And this is how, how communities, cultures, uh, even countries are held together, you know, by a certain set of, of values, which are tra- transmitted mm-hmm. through stories, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, either historical in nature or based on history. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, the, the stories are, are not as, 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 as clear cut. There's so many nuances and there's so many things that that make this story more complex than mm-hmm. what it truly is. Mm-hmm. And and we need to understand that. And I think that as we progress and we really begin to question um, the stories that we're being told, either culturally um, or, 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 or even in media, we begin to really question and be, and be and like, okay, wait mm-hmm. a minute. Do you think this is more pervasive nowadays than it used to be? Or do you think this has been a common thread for it's just become more sort of? I think that it's always been there, Mm -hmm. right? I think that it's always been there. Mm -hmm. I think the difference is that now we have a lot of um, 
I was gonna say we have a lot like of so we have a lot of more soapboxes, and there's a lot of a lot more. Uh, there's more information mm -hmm. out there to question certain things, certain standards, and 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 that makes us doubtful. Mm -hmm. So so it, it kind of like throws us for a loop mm -hmm. because if you think about it, right? Let's say you 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 have a story, right? That is a story. Let's say the story of the United States of America, how. We fought the British, and we work hard to to become the greatest nation in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And we live by the principles of life, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful story. It's a very powerful story. Right. But the nuance is, is that <clears throat> not everybody fell under that right. for a long period of time. Okay, that makes right? sense. And, and it's... And it's It's good that we're recognizing that other people need to, that we need to allow everybody to live up to those standards. Mm -hmm. But now it's like there's resentment and there's this and there's that. Yeah. So it makes the situation more, more, more complex. So it's important to understand that, that we have to be, be, be careful about the, the stories that we're, that we're hearing. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of like take it to the prism of, of, of critical thinking Mm -hmm. And um, and getting perspectives from mm -hmm. different types from different people, right? Yeah. Okay, or okay. different different points of views. You okay. know, we need to get that. All right. Yep. Okay. So just to kind of get into the discussion of sure. it, let's um talk about um maybe put some examples of the narrative fallacy sure. out there. So one mm -hmm. of the the examples that we have is the bootstrap narrative. Yeah. And that's the idea of picking yourself up by the bootstraps, uh -huh. literally. Uh -huh. And so what that means is that. Um, you know, if you work hard and you, you, you put in the effort and you work long days mm -hmm. and you seven days a week, 40 hours, you know, 50, 60 hours a week mm -hmm. that you're going to become successful, mm -hmm. but that isn't always the case no. for people. Correct. There are some people who just, so tell me, talk to me more about No, that. I mean, it's interesting that, that even the, even the main thing, the idea of picking up yourself at the bootstraps, that's like a very go West young man type mm -hmm. thing. Right. And I was having a conversation with someone about, wow, you know, isn't that amazing how those people out in the West, you know, went out there with almost nothing and, and, you know, wild land and this and that and the other, and they were able to, to, to make the best out of the West. And I'm like, you're forgetting something in that story. That every time they had an issue, they called the U.S. Army to kill all the Indians and take their land. Mm. So, see, it's like, so not necessarily picking up yourself by the bootstraps, mm. you know, because you needed that help, right? Mm -hmm. And and the idea is that that we we look at at people, you know, the idea of the self-made millionaire and the the idea of, of of those those individuals really doing everything on their own. Mm. But we fail to recognize the support system that these people have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The yes, it's true that they had a vision, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and people could say, "Well, look at Steve Jobs and what he did. Look at Bill Gates and what they did." Yes, you had a vision and you got something started, but to build it to a place that is what that what those those two examples became. They didn't do everything on their own. Mm -hmm. And it's impossible to think that we could do anything on their own. Even as we are right now, mm -hmm. you know, you need knowledge from other people. You need the support. Somebody needs to open the door for you mm -hmm. to have an opportunity um, if you come from nothing. You know, this is, I've never been a personal fan of the Oprah story, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, well, if Oprah could do it, you could do it too. It's like no, not everybody has the same inclination. Not every had not not everybody had the um, had to be at the right place, at the right time. That's why that was her individual path. Mm -hmm. So we pick ourselves by the bootstraps, mm -hmm. but then we also begin to compare and say, well, if that person did it, then I can do it too. Right. It's like putting a blanket or a generalization on the fact yeah. that if she can do it, oh my God, she was, you know, she was here, she lived in yeah, poverty whatever, yeah. and it, it happened for her, but they fail to realize that sometimes you have to be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. You have to know certain people, Correct. certain opportunities have to present themselves mm -hmm. and you have to have the wherewithal to take advantage of that or, you know, to, to and, and even that. further than that, look at the numbers, <laughs> right? Look at the numbers, look at the statistics, right? Like the statistics are how many people have achieved Oprah's level 
coming from those same circumstances. Right. I mean, it's, it's very slim almost to notice. It's almost like a lottery. Yeah. And it's not to say, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we're saying this so that people know. It's not to say that people like Oprah and Steve Jobs and these people who really um, made successes out of their lives mm-hmm. and became successful and overcame mm-hmm. adversity and, and obstacles and challenges didn't put in a lot of really hard work. Correct. And sort of pick themselves up by the bootstraps Mm -hmm. because I think people do that, but not everybody's going to achieve the same level of success. And Mm -hmm. even if they don't to expect that, well, they didn't put in a lot of work and that's the reason why they're where they're at. But again, it's like you fail to to talk about, you know, their partners. Exactly. That's what I'm you saying. You know, the people that were the able to make sure that mm-hmm. everything else was okay, mm-hmm. the relationships mm-hmm. that, the, you know, in, in, in Jeff Bezos' uh, mm-hmm. situation, the parents had to fund, help him fund them, right. find the money to get started. So you have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of unsung heroes and mm-hmm. a lot of people that, you know, they, the, that put you on their shoulders mm-hmm. to get to the next level. You know, right. there's also the element of luck, <laughs> that a lot of people don't you know we've talked about this you before. know we've talked about this before and i love the fact that elon musk and i remember watching and i mentioned this before and i saw one of his documentaries in which he said you know hey i also got lucky you know and and that's something that is he did say that yeah it, yeah you know there's an element in there that, of, of the unknown of yes you got to take the chance yes you got to work hard mm-hmm. but there's 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 you got to be smart about things, mm-hmm. um, but you can't do everything on your own. It right. is an impossibility. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and that's something that 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 we need to kind of like keep in mind. Yeah, you know, when we go into our stuff, okay. and and then we go when we go into our ventures, and when we go into the things that we would like to do on our quest, on our quest yeah. to either yeah. either find ourselves, find a place in the world, yeah. find our purpose, mm-hmm. find out find exactly what it is that we would like to do, right? Mm-hmm. And and so you have to be cognizant of all those the spectrum of possibilities mm-hmm. because the story is beautiful. Yeah. Right? Oh, Oprah's course. story is a beautiful it story, is. Steve mm-hmm. Jobs and all those guys. Mm-hmm. Those are really good stories. However, this is the simplicity of it all. You work hard, you get there, mm-hmm. you achieve success. And I think that you do achieve a level of success. But also, it you know, depends what your target it's all, is. I was just going to say, it depends on what the goal is. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and perhaps that's what it is. You're achieving goals. You are doing that, but you're not as successful. You don't become uh, rich or a millionaire or whatever, you know, as a result mm-hmm. of that. And that doesn't mean that you're less than. And to, to, to feel like, you know, I'm just trying to put that out there because I don't want people to, it's not. So, so, so here's the way that I say, right? Because I've been kind of like looking into this because there's a point in which, you don't want to crush dreams, but you also want to be realistic. That's what I'm right? trying like, to and say. The, and the thing with what, that what we are trying to accomplish is this one one thing, right? You have to know yourself. The quest reveals who you are and what you are and mm-hmm. what your potential is. Based on those things, your value system, the things that are important to you, mm-hmm. right? You create your goals and your values based on that, mm-hmm. right? And you'll work hard for that, Right? But sometimes you don't, perhaps you don't have to work as hard to achieve that, those right. things, mm-hmm. you know. But the idea is, the idea of success is that you identify yourself. You're living in accordance with your heart and your mind, mm-hmm. right? And then you are achieving the goals that you set out based on those value systems, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what success really truly is. You know, you could put an amount of money next to it, uh, and that's a way of measuring it. But it's more at those value systems being aligned mm-hmm. in you. Yeah, and we've talked about that. And we've talked about that. But it's like that's kind of like the core behind it. So, so that's, another that's to wrap that part up. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I wanted to come up, uh, you know, talk about another example that we have, which is when people have a negative experience, they construct a story that this mm-hmm. experience represents a pattern or generalization about themselves or the world. Yeah. And this is what you're seeing a lot now. Just, um, we just kind of talked about that. Yeah, but yeah. But you see that right now in the mental health issues that we're, the, we're, we're, that we're facing, right? It's like like you, you let's say you have a situation in a, ch- in a, a, a particular situation in a space, a time frame in childhood that was really adverse or even adolescence or throughout life. Mm-hmm. You know, it happened to me just recently in the last few years mm-hmm. and adverse situations. And you begin to define who you are based on that without really stepping away far back enough to be able to dissect all the moving parts 
that go into those type of decisions and and, and those type of circumstances. You know, and that's hard to see when you're in the muck. It is. <laughs> right? Like when you're in the muck of it and then and, and then when and, and if if you're there and that did either a financial um ad, a, a adverse reaction or something that is emotionally adverse and that distance hasn't been there, then you begin to equate it and identify yourself with it. Mm-hmm. And identify yourself with Label this yourself. is who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, and we say that we tell that story, and then the, you know we start listening to the other stories in the culture, and then comparing ourselves to it, mm-hmm. we just make it, it, it kind of like it becomes quicksand. Yeah. So we have to be aware that situations like that happen to us. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to kind of like step back and ask ourselves if this has this situation happened to anybody else before. Right. Chances M- are. Chances are that they have. <laughs> yeah. Right. Course. Um, okay, if I'm stepping back enough, back enough, and I'm start looking, oh, but look at this person did this. Mm-hmm. This happened to this person. Mm-hmm. Not an exact same thing, which is what we focus most of the time. This only happens to me because it happened in this particular setting. But the common denominator mm-hmm. of what happened is the same thing. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Lost. Mm-hmm. We lost something. Yeah. That's a universal theme, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we lost one of our cats recently. Yeah. And that, you know, to us, that's a, that's a painful feeling of loss mm-hmm. and, and losing someone. Someone might have lost something else. They might have lost love. It's a universal feeling, mm-hmm. and everybody, ex- uh, ex- uh, the experience of it was specific to the person. Right. It's a different experience for everybody. Mm-hmm. We all go through it differently. Exactly. Yeah. But that common theme is there. Is so when you begin to look at, oh, people have felt that. This is not a unique thing, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um then you begun and like this mm-hmm. reminds me this kind of like brings mind the story of a buddha uh, a lady came to him crying that her son passed away right and then I, I, I don't remember exactly the whole story but the the idea was that the buddha asked the lady go around and see if you could find someone that hasn't lost something mm. you know and the idea is like, oh, okay. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only yeah. one. It doesn't define who I am, but it's an experience that I had. The, so, so you see the difference? Yeah. An experience mm-hmm. that doesn't define me, mm-hmm. but it's an experience. Right. You know? Yeah. This is like when they say in school, a child is not bad, but a behavior could be. Right. So you see the difference? Yeah. You know, I understand. Yeah. So it's like it, it, this is one of the things that I that we see right now. That it's kind of pervasive in our in our mm-hmm. in our in our society. I think that idea of a mistake or something that we didn't live up to identifying that, us. Yeah, it, yeah, it defines you know, who we are. Defines yeah. who we yeah. are. So, and that's a story that we keep telling and 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 putting in the grooves on our minds. Yeah, and we believe it. You know, it be, it's r- ruminating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we're gonna do an episode on that mm-hmm. you know it becomes that that mm-hmm. that recording yeah that we play constantly and that's a very 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 negative and, um impact on and people. self-defeating very very you know and self-defeating which is yeah. good because that kind of leads into mm-hmm. <laughs> some of the impacts that i wanted to highlight sure, about sure. the narrative fallacies so um some of the these are some of the main mm-hmm. ways these aren't the only ways this is not limited to this list but one of the ways is biased decision making correct so when people construct stories or explanations that fit their preconceptions or biases they mm-hmm. overlook or ignore information that contradicts their beliefs leading mm-hmm. to a, a biased bias understanding, understanding of the, of the world, world. So. you know and it's funny because we were talking about unconscious bias the other day you and i mm-hmm. had a conversation we about um how we perceive things mm-hmm. in a certain way you know like i used to get that a lot because it's like oh you're a Dominican man. Oh, you're machista and tu eres mujeriego, right? And I'm like, mujeriego. right? You know, womanizer. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus, like I've never been that, but but okay. that is that's. I mean, I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday, and mm-hmm. that was the one thing that um she said. She was like, I went to the Dominican Republic. I saw all these Dominicans. I was like, whoo, got to get me one of those. And but there was this this idea this thing surrounding yeah. them of they're all players or mm-hmm. all this and that and whatever it's like it's like, like it's also the same thing i was like oh all rednecks are racist and this mm-hmm. it's like it's like we start like you know setting ourselves you know 
I, I would we, we hear a story, an anecdotal story or a story in the news or something like that, and we begin to believe it and we become biased based mm-hmm. on that without really truly understanding the nuances of it all. Right. Which is pretty interesting, you know, because again, it's not that simple. Right. Mm -hmm. So that leads into the next one, which is the limiting beliefs. Correct. Which is basically saying that when you you create these narratives, then what you're doing is you're limiting your perceptions or your perspectives on on the world. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's basically what's happening. Correct. Yeah. I mean, like you what you're doing is like you are closing yourself for the possibility that all that there is. Right. You know, and this right here, this limiting beliefs and this like this this this. Because we see it, it's like we live it in our politics, we live it in the narratives that we see on a regular basis. Everything it is so polarizing and so uh, tr- um, tribal, and so and and so in 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 um in their own compartments, compartmentalized, right? That we really fail to see or communicate or be exposed. To the interconnectedness of it To the it interconnectedness, all. Of it all, <clears throat> interconnectedness of it all and also the different possibilities of what could be. Because, again, it's like the way somebody lives their life in their own private life, it doesn't have nothing to do with me. No. You know, but it's sometimes when we come across, when we, when, when, you know, and I've seen it firsthand and I'm not, you know, I, I, I use myself as an example and I don't want to sound like a victim or anything like that, but I've been in situations in which I've been looked at less than because of my appearance, because of the way that I speak, mm-hmm. um, because of the way that I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's happened. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's happened to a lot of people. And again, it's like you start thinking that he's you, but it's just you have to understand that people look at the world in their perceptions of it all well, those without the, truly understanding, like getting to know you. Those are the limited. Those are the limited beliefs. Exactly. Like they're, oh, he's got an accent. Oh, I'm not going to be able to communicate with him. Oh, yeah. oh, he's, you know. I just had to happen like in the last couple of weeks. You know, I go to work and then it's like, I'm just minding my business, doing my job. And then a former colleague of me comes to this training and I was like, oh my God, Omar, you, Omar used to do this and used to do that and this and that. And I'm like, oh, whatever. And then, and then afterwards, everybody's shocked. It's like, you did all that. And I'm like, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, how come you never said anything? It's like, well, not my mm-hmm. responsibility to say what I've done or didn't do. It's funny because it's like, it's in the simple things. Because, I mean, I had this person come to my office the other day. Mm-hmm. And um, she was looking at something that was in my office. She's like, where did you get that? Morocco. Oh, you're you're from Morocco? Or are you Mexican? Mm. That was, are you from Morocco or are you Mexican? And I was like, hmm. But I've gotten that a lot in my life. Are you Mexican? So everybody that looks like me you know, olive skin, oh, I think it's white, but olive skin and dark hair and dark eyes, you're Mexican. But that's mm-hmm. not the case. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all black people, I'm looking at you, you're not a black person, you but know, they it's, all think you're a black person. I, and that's the label, but there's something There's to, so much more there to is, it, right? And like, if so, you could open yourself up yeah, to that and find yeah, yeah, out yeah. like, oh, this guy has an accent, where are you from? Yeah. And not have this assumption. It's assumptions. You know, so I, I get that from the kids a lot. And I get that from a lot of the kids that I work with in the past. It's like, what is Mr. Murray? Like, you're black? And I'm like, yes, but I'm not African-American. Mm-hmm. That's a different, it's a different experience right. because, you know, you're, you, again, you're so concerned in your own surrounding mm-hmm. that you fail to see that the, the, the world is so vast and the experiences are so vast and so different, yeah. right? <laughs> that, that you, you like, oh, oh, okay. It, it, it's, it, it should open you up and you should be open uh, to that possibility. Mm-hmm. And I'm guilty it's, of that because I know when I first met you, Long, 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 long time ago. Mm-hmm. What did I say to you? You thought I was Indian. I thought you were Indian. But you exactly. Got, you had that good hair, nice skin. I was like, oh, he's yeah. definitely Indian. And then I was like, huh. As soon as I heard you talk, I'm like, okay. hmm, he's definitely not Indian. You know, so, but again, it's like we, we make assumptions. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what the thing is? It's like, you know, it, this is a very, you know, narrative fallacy. It's like you, you know, first impressions yeah. are worth a million dollars, right? Course. Because it's like you, you, what you see in the first impression is what really determines what a person is or isn't, you know? Yeah. So you start really understanding mm-hmm. the fact that you got to be careful about first impressions because first impressions could be totally deceiving. Yeah. You yeah, know, definitely. they could be totally deceiving and they could be totally unexpected. Mm-hmm. And when you begin to, when you judge that and you had that, that limiting belief about, what you are seeing without really truly stepping back, Mm -hmm. really either investigating, you know, and not truly always going with the gut feeling right Mm -hmm. away because the gut feeling 
either positive because I had this happen. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, that person in school. And then turned out to be a complete the opposite, <laughs> you know. And then I'm like, oh, eh. and then the person proved me wrong. And it's like, oh, OK. Mm-hmm. So that leads into the final, yeah. um, you know, consequence or limitation here mm-hmm. is that um, it has an effect on your personal development. So the negative, yeah, the, 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 the because you're not now growing mm-hmm. and being open to experiences and opportunities, which we just talked about, but it's sort of the same. Yeah. Um, thing. But it's like, but as we embark on like our own personal quest, right. And I'm going to be like, just kind of focusing, always talking about the topics, but always going back to that idea of your soul's quest, right. That, that idea that throughout our lives, we begin, things begin to unfold, on fault for us and then we begin to find things in order for that to happen you have to be cautiously open <laughs> i'll put it like that cautiously open is a great yeah. way to put it <laughs> you have to be cautiously open right and 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 really pause for a lot of things mm-hmm. you know that's one of the things that i've really learned in the last couple of years of my life mm-hmm. that idea of really being Tranquilo, cojo lo suave, muchacho. You know, chill. chill. You know, it's like just watch mm-hmm. and see and talk and yeah. listen, to get to know where people are from. It's like, don't you know, jump to conclusions. don't jump to conclusions. Yeah. And those are the personal developing things that when we when we say, oh, you, you know, work hard, mm-hmm. you work hard and success will come. Yes, you could work your butt off. But if you're not aligned between who you are and what you want, mm-hmm. then that's going to be a, an exercise in futility, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and so you have to be able to say, okay, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know my value system. And this based on my, my goals are going to be based on this. Right. Not based on what society is telling me, not based on what, you know, cultural is saying, mm-hmm. but based on what it is that you want. Right. You know, so you, you have to be able to understand the stories that are being told mm-hmm. and the, that you're being bombarded with. And before you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. They have me. Let me t- let me take a look at. You're it. doing a lot of Spanish speaking. Here. I know the Spanglish <laughs> in me is coming out like tenfold. Man. <laughs> you know, it's so like, this is. I'm glad that you said that because it sort of leads to because we do have to wrap this up. Okay, I have to okay. wrap it up, B. Yeah, I see um, that. I see that. So you know, I want to end with giving our 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 listeners and our viewers like some takeaways. Yes, yeah, some strategies for sort of avoiding the narrative fallacy. Okay, so okay. say that again. So what are we doing? We're going to do, <laughs> to wrap this episode up, we're going <laughs> to give our viewers and our listeners five strategies or tips for ways that they can avoid the narrative okay. fallacy. Okay? okay. So the first one is to seek out multiple perspectives. Mm-hmm. Now, we're, this is basically, I'm just taking things from what we've already talked about. So, yeah. you know, so we're seeking out multiple perspectives because the idea is, is that it helps you to broaden your mind right, and, so yeah. and helps you with your self-development and personal development mm-hmm. right and these are ways to really broaden your perspective you know mm-hmm. it's like the more data the more data ugh, i hate that word is but i get it the more data the more information that you have the more points of views that you have you know the better access to making a more available de- educated you know, and decision and more educated yeah. and more and more uh, a decision that you can be comfortable with. Yes, because you, you, because you explore a diversity oh, of options right. and a divert diversity of points of view. Right. And you didn't take it from somebody else. It's yours. You yes. formulated it on your own. You know, and you could ask a person, you know, and you got to be careful too on who you ask yeah. as well. I mean, I want to kind of like put that in there because if you're seeking multiple perspectives, be careful of who you ask mm-hmm. and ask people, even if you feel like, I'm going to ask, I'm going to hear it. You know, well, sometimes you want to ask those people just because you want to hear what they have to say. Yeah, but you don't have to take that for a face. Exactly. Back. You know what I mean? It it's a have point to be of the view. All be all. Exactly. It's one point of view. I disagree with tons of people that I talk to. Correct. But I want to hear what they have to say because yes. I'm curious about that perspective. Mm-hmm. Not going to believe it. Not going to you know act on it. Not going to be whatever about it. But it's good to know those things. I and think you'd it's be important. surprised. Like you may you you may find someone that you probably are dismissive of, and you ask them a question about something, and you're like. Oh, I never thought about this. Exactly. And and so that would lead into mm-hmm. my number two, which sure. is to practice critical thinking. Yes. That's important. Yeah. You got to practice. Chris. I mean, that to me, that's like the 
the most complicated thing for me to do sometimes is to practice critical thinking. Well, it, it, it really goes back. Like, this is the idea of critical thinking, right? It's like you have an idea, right? You test the idea. You go around and you start looking for something that either discredits it or validates it's like it. like the scientific method. It's a scientific yeah. method. Constantly. It's like, and if you find instances in which, nope, that's not it. Then you know that it's, there's something else, right? right. That okay, I gotta. There's gotta be another, another, uh, another way. Right. You know, so it's like the idea of critical thinking is, and, and everybody does it on a regular basis. Is that whether or not we're doing it on a purposeful basis? Okay. You yeah. know, so the so so to be to sit down on something and think of something critical, it's not like, you know, it's like okay. Let me think about, uh, like, you know, with, with kids, it's like, oh, I don't want to live with my parents anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's think about that. Has anybody lived, not lived with their parents before? Right. What are the pluses? What are the minuses? Yeah. You know, what are the benefits of staying here? What are the, the negatives mm -hmm. of staying here? Can I delay this? Right. You know, let me try this plan. Mm -hmm. Let me check, cancel, and continue. Mm -hmm. You know, seek, you know, problem solving and, and all that stuff. So yeah. these are skills that you are developing throughout your life. Mm -hmm. And 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 sometimes it goes smoothly. Sometimes the answers don't come to you right away because the quest is not a straight line. It's squiggly ups and downs, peaks and valleys. So you are going to go through things that are really emotionally heavy sometimes. And and you could st you still have to act critically and think critically to deal with those emotions because you can't have just emotions without thought. Mm -hmm. It's that's not going to work. You know you have to have a balance between the thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's been your theme in this um, episode. Yeah, you know you have to have a balance between those two things, mm -hmm. and then be able to figure out oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's kind of like the way that you think critically about it. So to tie into that would be to be mindful of anecdotal evidence. Yeah. There is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of, inf a lot of stories out there. A lot of like, oh, look, a lot of motivational things. I've never been a big fan of motivational like stuff and mm -hmm. inspirational things, you know. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I, I hear it, but I've never been a big, never big a big fan I mean, well, like, a lot of times those things are based on their personal experiences yeah and this is why i like to focus a lot on the hero's journey on the monomyth mm -hmm. right because i think the monomyth is something that is universal you go into your adventure right you find some you find mentors you find you find villains and traitors and muses and all that stuff you you fall down you get up again and until you find the elixir of life, which is living from within yourself. Mm -hmm. So I love that monomyth more than mm -hmm. I love the motivational thing because that motivation is like going on church on Sunday, but then by Tuesday you forgot exactly what happened on Sunday. That's true. You know, I'll go into a big, big, uh, you know, seminar, you know, ah, and then a couple of days you, later, you're, you're like, wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> Something doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. So, so just be mindful of the anecdotal evidence and just test it out. Yeah. Okay. Number four is to avoid overgeneralization. Uh, yeah. It's like you, as much as you think that you know, you mm -hmm. don't know you enough. Don't. Yeah. yeah. You know. You, uh, we don't know enough. That's we good. don't know yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. Like, like as, 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 if you think you know something, you may not know as much as you think that you know. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you true. know, and it's like everybody that tells you otherwise, be weary of that because mm -hmm. they might be a con artist. Right. Mm, that's true. Yeah. You know? And so then what would be important to, to understand is mm -hmm. that not everybody knows everything and um, we don't know everything. And so we have to be able to be open to changing our beliefs, which is the mm -hmm. final yeah. um, tip. That and this is going to be hard for people, right? Because we believe that our beliefs uh, define who we are, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there, there's, well, these are like values and things that are instilled in us. So yeah, we're yeah. raised to believe these things. But again, this is one of the things that I that I like to talk about. It's like, and this is what one of the things that Nietzsche was really emphatic about. It's about the fact that you have to challenge the beliefs that are given to you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you have to challenge them is because in order for you to own those beliefs, you have to either have to validate them or re disregard them, right? Because once they're given to you, you know, they're, 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 they're something that is superimposed on you, mm -hmm. right? And if you, if you have an inkling that is, that you're questioning it, right? You should follow that thread and see where it leads you, you know? Mm -hmm. And they will, you'll find something else. 
Now, the- and even if you think that it it applies to you seamlessly, I think mm-hmm. it's important to still be open, which is what we've talked about Correct. throughout this episode, to be open to um, other perspectives and and mm-hmm. and seeing how those things might align with that belief that you 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 believe in or that you. Yeah. Um, feels really that that feels really good to you. You know yeah. what I mean. And 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 one of the things that I see in our society right now, right, is that that I see that some people are challenging b- beliefs that are traditional. I see that, you know. But what I also see, on the other hand, is them wanting to impose their new belief system. You know, on all you know, and you have that that fight of the imposition on belief system on one over the other. When it's right, when it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be like that. You could believe in this A, B, and C, right? And the other person could believe in, you know, G, H, I, J, right? (laughs) It's close, something like that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, okay. Yeah, so you could believe in those two (laughs) different things. Now, could they coexist? They could coexist, Mm -hmm. right? Can one invalidate the other? Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to a society, you have all these different beliefs. There has to be like a common ground in which we could coexist, right? Now, this is kind of like, ah, oh, this kind of utopian and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? But you could have a coexistent belief in which opinions to share, points of views to share, and say, okay, well, we're going to create an environment in which, you know, for the society's sake, you you believe what you want to believe. Do what this is the foundation of the United States: freedom of religion, freedom of belief. But at the core of it, there is a civility or how we interact with one another. Mm-hmm. This is this is the part in which when you hold on to those beliefs, you be you know, and it's like this is mine, and you. This is when the society truly truly starts breaking down, mm-hmm. because I can't be me unless I take from you and vice versa. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, this is pretty interesting stuff that's happening right now. I know we could talk about this forever and ever and ever. No, yeah, but but um, it is the story, so we got to be careful about the stories that we... I know you want me to wrap it up. I'm trying to get you to wrap it up. You tell me you want something, and then I try to do it, and you... know what? I I, I feel you, sister. So I I feel feel like I'm so rigid, but... No, no, it's... it's, We got to wrap it up. I got to be open to the structure, you know? I got (laughs) to be open to the structure of it all. (laughs) We hope you enjoyed this episode. Comment below with your thoughts and remember to stay connected by sharing and subscribing.